Hey everybody, welcome to the season four dev update. We're still in Irvine. Got a big group of people with me today. Got Gwen, who you met a couple uh, dev updates ago, who's a producer on New World. Dave V, who everyone knows, the, the associate game director. Got Rosie, the WEX art lead, world art lead. Chad, who's the AI lead. Patrick, who leads the seasons and progression teams. Vince, who's the UX lead. And Dan down there, who is the social and mounts lead. Lots of leads here today. So before we get too deep into the season four update, I want to talk a little about the roadmap. So at the beginning of the year, you know, we released a roadmap that talked about everything we were going to do this year, and we've been pretty diligent about it. But in the, honor, in the, uh, in the effort of full transparency, we've ended up moving some things out of season four, and I want to talk through those and just you know, own some of the things we missed on and talk about why. Um, so the first one is the season trial with mutators. We decided to move this to season five so we could do a little more focus on the expedition coming out this season. Uh, so we are still shipping a, a 10 person mutator, but it's gonna be next release and it probably won't have mutators. We're leaning heavily against that. Uh, another one that's not happening is the seasonal trinket. So with this one, when, when we, you know, artifacts weren't on the original roadmap and plan. And once we released artifacts, it seemed to fill the void of the trinket. And we thought before we start putting more things in the mix, let's watch what happens with this, get player feedback and figure out if, you know, if trinkets is still the right thing to do or we wanna go a different direction. Um, this next one is the MSQ update. So we were planning to finish the MSQ this release in December. However, you know, we're not really happy with the way that the MSQ update went in the last, in the last release. And we wanted to put a little extra time just to make sure we give you a quality experience. So that's gonna move into the next one. Uh, we had already talked about really not being into heart runes. I think we did enough of those, and I think that any more would get a little bit convoluted. Um, next one, we're going to go into this really deep later, but at a top level, cross-world expeditions and arenas is moving. Now, the, the reason it's moving is we wanted to surprise everyone with an improved group finder. And we did, you know, it's, it's underway, but it's going to take a little longer than we wanted, so it's not going to make season four. However, we will deep dive on that in a little bit. And then finally, the seasonal territory control. Again, uh, we, we talked about doing this, but the influence races have done such a good job of engaging the players. We wanna get more feedback and we'd rather respond to feedback and improve that than try to throw another system into the mix. So there's good reasons for it. And this is just, when you release a roadmap, you know, 12 months out, you don't always know how things are gonna evolve over time and what's gonna happen in the live environment. So things change and we just wanted to, you know, be open and honest and get in front of the changes. So with that, um, I'd like to shift the focus to season four and talk about Eternal Frost, because there's some pretty cool stuff coming this month. And the very first thing is uh, it comes with a new storyline. And someone's going to tell you about that who's sitting behind me. Yeah, so season four storyline. Uh, the Silver Crows are back. So very excited to have Grace O'Malley, Xander, and the crew uh, back to take you on a new adventure. Uh, with this storyline, we have an old client, Sky the Spear Daughter. She returns and warns that the Varangians are back up to no good. Uh, they never seem to be up to any good, so we're fighting them again. Uh, with her coming and bringing that news, you need to seek out new allies. So that brings in uh, Daichi Saito, the new uh, member of the Silver Crows, who you'll have to uh, fight him to gain his respect in order for him to join the Crows. Um, so it's one of several soul trials that come with this season narrative, which is super exciting. We're really expanding our quantity of soul trials we're doing with the season narrative. So Chad, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, like you were saying, I think we've got a total of, I think, four um, uh, solo trial boss fights. So we've got the Daichi encounter, um, uh, another uh, fight with the uh, Ice Dragon, as well as kind of an ultimate Ice Guardian. Um, uh, that one in particular I really, really like. Uh, has some great mechanics uh, that we haven't really seen yet, uh, interacting with uh, some throwable objects to kind of break this interaction that the boss is doing uh, with some rooms in the environment. Uh, I think that one's really fun. And then uh, an ultimate fight with uh, Mordred, um, uh, which is really cool. He's got some really interesting, uh, not seen before, uh, uh, new abilities. And I think the quest experience is once again up leveled. Like it's just, there's so many fun quests. There's one where you actually play on a chessboard. Like there's a mission in that. Like we've just found new interactions in the quest that keeps it sort of interesting and, and really keeps the narrative alive. 
Yeah, personally, I like that, you know, we've, we've done a lot for the group, the PvE group players. We've done a lot for the PvP players recently. And now we're doing more for the solo players. And I want to make sure the message is where we care about all, all of the groups of players. And I think at a high level, I, I love the solo soul tri the solo trials. Uh, they're pretty cool. Um, we also have a new expedition coming out, uh, the Glacial Tarn for level 65 players. What makes that cool? Well, the Glacial Tarn, in contrast to the Empyrean Forge, is going to be all icy and cold. So we have some real extremes in temperature. And it's really interesting uh, second half to the Empyrean Forge. So we see those two, sort of the, the two sides of the hot and the cold. Yeah, and uh, just to talk a little bit about uh, what players are going to be encountering in there, uh, we've got some really neat uh, environmental interactions. There's uh, icy uh, stalactites or icicles dropping from the ceiling on the player. Um, some really interesting um, uh, kind of empowering mechanics where players have to defeat it, gathering flame. Um, some new enemies with uh, icy ancient guardians, uh, ice pharyngians, and, and some new bosses. Gwen, you want to tell us about those? Yeah, the new uh, ice torso boss, does he have a place to player facing name? Uh, Sir Loth. Sir Loth, that's right. Yeah, so we've got the Ice Commander, Sir Loth, in Glacial Tarn, and I think the most exciting thing about that fight is just how much there is going on, and there's going to be a few different ways that you can play it. There's uh, other AI that are going to be buffing the boss in the center. There are weak points that you can target if you're for focused on ranged play. And there's also a lot of movement around the arena. So hearkening back to Empyrean Forge, you have to really pay attention to what's around you and make sure you're not getting caught in the floor turning into lava. And this time you actually have a lot more control over the arena itself because the boss can break the bridges, but you can also build them back up. So making sure you're not caught on a platform where you need to be. I still haven't beat it in playtest yet, so I'm gonna need to work on it a little bit harder. Maybe you should stop playing with Davey and get other people to yeah, maybe more with like Sorry. Pride and Darren. They were they were a little bit better. But then I play healers, so maybe I should be keeping Dave alive better. I like that. I think <laughs> the best healer in the world couldn't do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, we got a couple new artifacts. You want to talk about those? Yeah, so uh, new artifacts. So for those of you who are done with your chase uh, from the expansion artifacts, we're introducing eight new ones. Uh, pretty pretty diverse cast of weapons and armor, so those weapons that did not get artifacts with the expansion, uh, the life staff, the bow, things like that, they're finally going to get their time in the sun, and they should be pretty fun for players to chase. So, two of my favorites, um, Vengeance, the life staff, pretty unique uh, weapon here. It takes more of an offensive approach for the life staff and increases the damage you deal based on how many uh, times you're healing people. So I'm sure there's some pretty fun interactions there for players to find. There's also Gladiator, the round shield. Uh, what this does is it acts as a sort of thorns where when you take melee damage, you then inflict a bleed on the player. So some interesting interactions there. Uh, Dave, any other favorites from you? Yeah, I got two favorites also. Uh, one, I know all the bow players felt left out. Uh, your bow is coming, bolt caster. Uh, it's really cool. It does, uh, as you can guess, lightning damage. Uh, but the other nice thing is it does is if you hit someone with full health, you get a stun. Uh, so that's going to be very interesting to see the power of bows plus a stun. Uh, another one I love is quick draw gloves. Uh, what I like about this is it really changes the gameplay, right? It's not just numbers. Uh, every time you swap weapons with, this with these gloves on, you get a little bit of immunity. So it's neat to sort of like plan out your weapon swaps and, and sort of have a different vector on gameplay. So. Some pretty interesting ones. I'm really excited about the DPS life staff. I haven't even come close to finishing my artifacts so far, so those are just going to go on hold for a little bit so I can do my life staff. Yeah, I think, like I mentioned this in the uh, earlier part, but I think artifacts just changes the game. And it gives, it, they're so fun as chase items at the end, like really awesome. We're also bringing back some of our favorite seasonal events. We have the Winter Convergence Festival and the Legacy of Crassus. And I don't know about you, Patrick, but I am looking forward to seeing those Gleamites come sailing in. I'm excited too, and that's a great segue because one of the bigger changes with the convergence this year is we're really increasing the uh, frequency of those Gleamite meteors. They're such a cool thing uh, in Turnum, and you only get to see it for a month out of the year. So we really wanted to make sure that players are seeing a lot of those at night, and it's really lighting up the sky. Um, outside of that, you know, the standard reward suite, so new armors to chase, new emotes. And one of the, I think, coolest things about the uh, convergence this year is we're changing the way crafting works with these uh, holiday events. 
So what we're doing is introducing a new resource, the uh, pristine Gleamite chunk from the shop. You can buy this, and that'll let you craft a guaranteed 700 item with some fixed perks. And should be a really uh, awesome way for players to hop into events like Winter Convergence and get some great gear out of it. Um, outside of that, Legacy of Crass, as you touched on. So there's going to be a new pickaxe. Might be best in slot, might not. But what it does have is a unique skin, so players can go chase that. And there's also two new statues that come from the event from uh, each of the cr corrupted Cyclopses. This will be fun to decorate your house with. Okay. Next, Vince, you want to tell us about some of the inventory changes, quality of life improvements? Uh, sure, yeah. We've, we've been gathering feedback uh, for a while now on, on inventory and some changes. Um, and I'm glad to announce that, you know, uh, really big changes are coming in. Um, so one of them is that basically right now the view of your inventory items is all two columns. So you have like two columns of, and it gets really long if you have a lot of rewards or a lot of, of things in a specific category. Um, you cannot change that to one column so it can go wider. Um, you can also reorganize and sort and um, either uh, change the order of all of your categories as well as turn on or turn off some categories too. So if you really don't like gems, you can hide them all. Um, and then you can, you can change all of this sort of at will. Um, if you like the two column layout, you can also move things from one column to the other. If you like all the crafting stuff on the right um, and all your gear on the left or the other way, um, you can make all those changes as well. Um, and another cool feature that people have been asking about um, that we're really excited too is within each category, you can do batch crafting based on rarity. So you just check the box of the rarity of stuff you want to, or salvage, you want to salvage. Um, and then you basically just salvage all. So if, you want, if you're like Scott Lane, you want to salvage all your commons and legendaries, you can go do that. Um, if you're like Dave V and you're anti-blue and you just want to nuke um, all of that or rarity, you can go for it. So we think we think you know we're really excited about this one, and we, we think um, we've you know we've addressed a lot of the, the feedback. But please keep it coming, and we'll continue to keep making improvements to inventory. It's good timing, weren't you? Just talking about salvaging legendaries and how the UI creates a little bit of uh, excess clicking. Yeah, that that control C gets a little frustrated. <laughs> so I'm very very happy for this change, and thank you, Vince. I think we're I think I think it's a huge quality of life improvement. And it's something that we're going to continue to pay attention to, not just inventory, but quality of life. So earlier on, I mentioned uh, that we, you know, that we were moving cross-world uh, expeditions and arenas out because we wanted to focus on improved group finder. Dan, why don't you tell us exactly what that's going to encompass? Yeah, the wait, uh, it's almost over. Uh, we've almost got it. Uh, we are going to do cross-world expeditions with a uh, one-click uh, group finder. Uh, so... You can go as a solo, you can click the button. As a pre-made group, you can click the button. You will find uh, a group to play expeditions with cross-world. Um, we are doing, uh, you know, we're sporting all the vanilla expeditions. Uh, we're also going to support mutated expeditions as well. Nice. And this has roll queue, Dan, so you can be assured you always have a tank and healer in your group. You go into the system, you pick a roll, it's going to... You know, it's balance things out. You're going to have uh, a bonus uh, for those in-demand rolls. And, nice. uh, yeah. Any other bonuses, like, just to give you incentives to do it every day or something like that? Funny you should ask. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. There is a 3x daily bonus for clicking the big random button that will send you to, you know, wherever, wherever you're needed the most for to fill a group right now. And isn't there even more, Dan? Uh, what if sure I, th is. I think <laughs> there's no ends to this stuff, Dave? <laughs> With pugs versus group mate, pre made groups, sometimes you're, you know, you don't have that coordination, so it's a little difficult, more difficult with pickup groups. Are there any sort of compensation or incentives to help that group along? Yes, absolutely. This is not a, an original thing by any means, but we're adding a 15% buff uh, when you end up in a random group to uh, damage and, uh, and healing. It's going to be big. Yeah, I'm excited for this. I think, you know, one of the controversial topics was like, should we do these one click group finders for mutations? Because mutations are a little bit more, you know, it makes sense, obviously, for story mode and the easier, but like for M3s, uh, we're going to try doing it. I think it's the right way to do it. Uh, but I think we talked about not having them uh, impact the leaderboard, yeah, right? Like no so leaderboard that, placement for So that can um, stay those. pristine. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be super fun. Like just the ability to press one button. Uh, never have to link gear again, never have to like, you know, beg for groups or anything, and you'll just be in a group instantly. It's just well, for me, it's as much about the wait, not having to try to wait for a group to form. Like with now, when you're combining that with cross world, it's, uh, it's, it's gonna, it, it, it's gonna feel much more on demand, and that's, that's exciting. And healers, you're gonna get paid extra. I appreciate that buff too, <laughs> because as a healer, having like good group synergy with the people that I always play with is really beneficial, but now I don't have to worry. 
So thanks again, everybody. And just as a recap today, we talked about some roadmap changes. We went into deep dive on all of the season four features, including a new storyline, the new expedition, artifacts, our upcoming seasonal events, uh, the awesome quality of life in, um, updates we've done, as well as giving you a little insight into where we're going with the improved group finder. So thank you again, everybody, for doing that. We'd also like to you know, elicit questions for the Q&A. And we've seen the feedback that people feel like we're not answering all of their awesome questions or giving enough detail. So one thing we're gonna do is be a little more prescriptive on the kind of questions we are you know, comfortable answering. And hopefully this will feel more respectful of your time because we really do appreciate you asking the questions. It's awesome. Um, uh, with that said, if you like what you saw, please like us, subscribe, all of those cool things. And otherwise, we will see you in a tournament in season four. Everyone wave now. <laughs>